is a monster black neck spitting cobra. Arguably one of the largest I've ever captured. Beautiful specimen, very weighty. Larger Negricol, if you've seen this one before. But look at the length of that, about 1.8. Quite a heavy snake. And as you can see, this is also probably the most aggressive snake I deal with. Put it on the ground for a while. Come back. Quite frankly, I'd rather, <coughs> I'd rather work with a black mamba than work with these. They are exceedingly aggressive. One of the most aggressive cobras. There you can see, standing challenging me. Now these cobras, that I may or may not have told you before, is that they spray or eject their venom from specially designed venom fangs. And that's how you see these snakes also, unlike the wrinkles of Southern Africa, they're able to spit from a lying down position. If you look carefully at the head, you'll see it's got, it seems to have like cheeks. That's where the venom glands are. So you can just lie down, lift its lips, squeeze the venom, the muscles around the venom glands and eject the venom. And a snake this size can easily be accurate up to two, two and a half meters. And uh, speaking from experience, if the venom goes into your eyes, it's excruciatingly painful and you'll have a problem for a week or two. And that's assuming that you're able to wash out the eyes with copious amounts of water as soon as this happens. That's one thing you shouldn't do. You see, I turned my head away. When you're looking at these things, when you're wearing sunglasses, you keep on looking directly at the snake. Otherwise the venom can go underneath, above, or in at the sides. Of course, the very best thing is to wear a full face shield. But who walks around with a full face shield? Yeah, you're a magnificent beast. Now this one's not too happy with me, but it's fairly calm. It's quite warm, it's far past the middle of the day, and this snake is full of energy. Nausea and Negricolis. Now they do actually get larger than this in this area. It's quite a fantastic snake. You see it's not exceedingly glossy like some of the other snakes. It's, a, it's actually quite a, quite a matte finish. And these, these ones normally move mostly at night time. So they would be very difficult to see. There'd be no reflection of a torch on them uh, because it's dark. You wouldn't see them even in an area like this if it's dark and night time and uh, you could likely step on it. Now just because a spitting cobra spits, it doesn't mean it can't bite. It has a powerful cytotoxic venom with some neurotoxic properties. So like the adders and the vipers, like the adders and the vipers, it's a cell destroying venom. So as uh, the late great Steve Irwin would say, it rots the flesh, causes extreme necrosis and is extremely extremely powerful and painful. Now many people ask me, well, why does a spitting cobra spit? Because there are only two types of spitting cobras in this country, being Zambia. Now the, the, the ability to eject its venom is designed to ward off predators and to temporarily blind them. Temp there's lots of predators that, that want to eat these such as mongooses, birds of prey, other larger mammals, uh, your um, honey badgers and things like that. And even, even, croc even crocodiles, even crocodiles. And uh, the venom then is designed, goes into the eyes, it temporarily blinds them and gives the snake enough time to escape. But make my mistake, if I, if I grab this snake now, it will bite me. So please don't be fooled. Just because it's a spitting snake, it doesn't mean that it will only spit. And kids, please don't try this at home. Yep, there we go. Yeah. 
I'm going to let him go on his way now. Lovely specimen. One of the biggest, if not the biggest. Go on, you go that way. Go on. Come, come. Don't think you want to go that way. 